Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to build on the Windows Laps video I did last week, the local administrator password solution. Because in that video, I showed how you can go and get the password for one of those machines you're managing. If I'm sending it to Azure Active Directory, that could be Azure AD joined or hybrid joined. Hey, I can go over to the portal, I can click a machine, I can show its local administrator password, and I can go and hit that show button, get my picture out of the way, and you can see it. So I can actually go and see the password. But what about if I want to do that from a script, the command line? What about if I want to do it via an API? And what if I need to access potentially more than just the current password? Imagine I have a machine that I've took back in time. I've applied a snapshot. I've done a restore point. So I need to maybe know the administrator password previously. So Azure AD actually stores the last three passwords for that administrator credential you've configured. And so what I've got here is a little script I've created. The link is in the description below. It's in my random stuff, uh, GitHub repo as always. And now the first thing I do require is I need to have installed the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module. So that first command here is just installing that. And I like to do it for all users. You don't have to do the scope of all users, but I like to do that. And now what's happening is when I want to go and get that password, I need two permissions, API permissions, as part of my token that I'm authenticating to Azure AD with. Now, one way I can do that is as part of my connect MG graph, I can just add a scope and within that, I can put in those two permissions. So it's device.read.all and device local credential.read.all. So that is one way of doing it. I can just pass those two API permissions I need as part of my authentication command. Now, the other way, and this is sort of documented uh, in that document I'm linking to there, is I could create an Azure AD app registration. And then what I can do is with that app registration, give that the two delegated permissions I need. So if I wanted to take that approach, if I go over to here, and this time I'll go and look at my app registrations, all you would do is do a new registration. I've already gone ahead and do that. I mean, I'll show you super quickly. For example, I set it up as any organization. And for the redirect, uh, I think I just did public client and I did HTTP local host is what I did there and hit register. But then in that application, all I really had to do, well, there was actually two things. One is in the authentication, you can see I've got my redirect URI there. I did have to set this flag to avoid a certain error permission it gave. So enable the following mobile and desktop flows. So I set that to yes for allow public client flows. And then in its API permissions, you just need to give it as delegated those same two permissions that I just drew, device.read.all and device.local.credential.read.all. That's it. And then once you've done that, that app registration will have a client ID. And so what I can do is once I've created that in my tenant, the other option, again, I do one of these two, is I can connect and I want to get a token for that particular client application, which once again will give me a token with those two permissions. So I can do this one of two ways. They're both gonna achieve the same thing. So hey, I can go ahead and just connect with those two as part of my token, or hey, for my tenant ID, um, for my app I've created, I can go and connect as that. Either one of those is gonna do the same thing. Now to actually get the local password. So I have a certain device name. Mine is, I'll do the SAV work VM. And I can just run this get lapse AAD password, the device. I'm telling it to include passwords as plain text. And I want the history. So give me all three of them. So if I was to run this command, hey, it spits out all three of them. And for all three of them, you can see it's giving me, well, what is the actual password? What is the actual account name? 
When does this expire? So when is it gonna rotate it? When was this actually created? And because I did history, I'm also seeing the previous passwords. So I see three in total. So I can see the last three passwords that exist. So it's really easy. Yes, there's a little bit of setup. I have to have that Microsoft Graph PowerShell module installed. On any of those current machines where LAPS is supported, the modern one, so it's that Windows 10, Windows 11, and the H2 builds, Windows Server 2016 and above, I'll have this LAPS PowerShell module available. I just have to in and install the Microsoft.Graph module. Now, what about if I don't wanna use PowerShell? What if I just wanna use the API? So in this case, I need to know the device ID. Now I'm grabbing it using Microsoft Graph. So I know my device name, remember I've got a variable here, my SavWork VM. I'm just doing a search, and I could again do this using the REST API. Hey, I wanna find out what the device ID is. So I'm getting the device object for that. And then all I'm gonna do now is obviously I need a token. So in my case, I'm using invoke MG graph request, but you could use any other method to call a RESTful API and you'd have to have the bearer token that's gonna authenticate and has those permissions. I'm doing a get method and all I'm calling here is, well, graph.microsoft.com, um, the beta, the device local credentials, the device ID, which I'm getting from that object because I went and fetched it, and then I'm saying, hey, I want you to also return the credentials. Now I have to escape the dollar, because this is PowerShell, so I'm escaping the dollar sign, but it would be just be question mark dollar select equals credentials. So if I run that command and I'm storing it in this response variable, so I can just say, hey, let's execute that. And now I've got a response. So if I actually just looked at the response for a second, you can see my response and as part of the response, you can see I've got this credentials attribute, which is an array. I have three different entries for the three historical passwords. So if I just went and looked at one of those, so I'll look at the first item, item zero. Here we can see it's that same credential that I've shown before. However, when I use the RESTful API, it base64 encodes the password. So then I just have to decode it. And in my case, I'm in PowerShell and it's very easy to decode. I can use the system.txt encoding from base64. So I'm using that dollar response credentials, the password in base64 format. And if I run that, it's the same password we saw before. So it's that dash ism32, which is the same password. If we scroll up, it will be the current dash ism32 and it's the same password we saw in the portal. That was it. So I think the question had come up, hey, how can I go and get the password not through the portal, through programmatic, through a script? How can I access the historical ones? Well, I can access the historical ones using the get lapse AAD password. I can get the historical ones using the RESTful API called to device local credentials. And it's actually pretty simple. And again, I've got this in the descriptions. You can go and look at this and play around with it. Um, as always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.